Welcome to Edge of the Rabbit Hole. I'm Mike Ricksecker, author and ghostorian. And not with me, as always, is my co-host, Vanessa Hogle. We have special co-host Chuck Banks with us tonight. Of course, Vanessa is in Ireland. And our special guest tonight is Amy Major, returning. We had her on last year. Fantastic conversation. And, well, she has some upstate updates and more things to talk about this evening. So, um, well, let me first welcome on Chuck. Chuck, thank you for filling in in for Vanessa tonight. Really do appreciate that. I know I'm not quite as good looking as Vanessa, but uh, I, I will do the best I can with my personality. <laughs> yeah, you do have a fantastic personality. And, uh, well, Amy Major, you're uh, familiar with her from last year, a uh, spiritual and rescue medium. So an author now of this is going to be your second book. And so, uh, Amy, welcome back. Tell us a little bit about what is going on in your world. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm not as attractive as she is either, so ditto there, but hopefully the personality <laughs> will kick in too. Um, as for me, I am a rescue medium, a spiritual medium, energy healer, author, lecturer, teacher. The list continues and goes on and on. Soon to be large business owner. I've had so many things happen to me in the last few years. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's crazy. Uh, I'm just amazing with the amount of opportunities that have really come to me. Uh, the last few years, my first book, Toward the Light, did really, really well. I had people contact me all over the world asking me to train them in rescue mediumship. And I'm like, okay, well, this is going to take an awful lot of time to do this. So let's just write another book. Right. <laughs> So I wrote a book more detailed about how to train, develop, become a rescue medium, and it's called Light the Way, and it's just really in-depth. It's like when I wrote this book, it was like given birth. Like everything that I had known about rescue mediumship, I put in this book to sort of be a field guide for those who want to learn how to help earthbound spirits cross over. So I'm really excited. It comes out May 28th this year it's already available on pre-order on amazon so i'm very very excited for that fantastic yeah and we actually have our first question of the evening from rebecca gardner and she'd just like to know what exactly is a rescue medium well a rescue medium is is very different than what i call a message medium which is a psychic medium or spiritual medium we actually specialize in just working with spirits they're what we call earthbound uh, they have not made the final transition to the other side. So there's somewhere in between states, and there are many different levels in between these uh, variations of vibration. But we actually specialize in talking with these spirits, counseling them through their issues, and then help guiding them on to the other side. There are times when these spirits are re not ready to move on. So we really work on clearing them. We can clear them from people, which... Oh my gosh, the amount of work that I've had to do in this field is really increased quite a bit. Um, or we clear them from places um, if people are feeling kind of threatened or overwhelmed by the spiritual activity. So we communicate with them, help them cross, and do a lot of clearing work as well. So it's mostly all about the earthbound level, not the other side. And, you know, uh, if you don't mind, I'll jump, jump I in any time. Yeah, um, and and I don't want to take over because I'm I'm, I'm just a co-host anyway. <laughs> I want to make sure that I'm a nice guy. But I, I'm really excited about uh, you know the the idea of working with earthbound spirits. Now, how often do you find that uh, these earthbound spirits? I, I mean, are, are there times where, where they end up attaching to a particular person where you get in what we call spiritual attachment and not really mean to do that? Oh, all the time. There's, there's quite often you're just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And spirits wander. And when they wander, they get attracted to certain vibrational frequencies around them. And they're probably on their way to go wander somewhere else and you sort of get in the way. Next thing they know, they popped in you and they don't know how to get out. So, And there's other times when spirits are just around you. They get, lean in to your aura and your vibration and next thing they know, they're embedded into your aura and attached to you. So it's not always something that they mean to do. And they're not always negative. I mean, you see a third of the spirit attachments are negative. Two thirds are not. They're just looking for comfort, looking for somebody, a warm body to hang on to, somebody to just listen to them because they're lonely. 
these are the ones that are aware that they're dead. Wow. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, I, I spend a lot of time dealing with, uh, you know, more, more negative spirits, but it, it would be nice you know, to, to communicate and work with, uh, you know, that type of situation. And, and I really, to be honest with you, I'd never seen it in that light to where, you know, Hey, you know, they, 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 you know, they're, they, they're attracted to a particular energy and then they just become, you know, uh, uh enamored or so, you know, to, to a physical body. Well, there are actually um, been books written, and I don't know how accurate it is, but they say 80% of the population has some form of attachment, whether it's a spirit, entity, energy cluster, projection, or any type of manifested energy that you've absorbed. So 80% of the population has some type of attachment. You can't think 80% of the population has a negative attachment. There aren't enough spirits to go around for that. So there are many different variables with attachments. Well, let me ask you something. Because, you know, we're supposed to, at least as far as uh, I'm aware, we're all supposed to have spirit guides. Would that be considered an attachment? No. Um, <clears throat> spirit guides is more of a channel. Okay. So think of it as an energy that's outside your body channeling through into yourself, and you kind of hear their voices. You hear, you sense, you feel uh, the, your, the spirits of the guide. Sometimes spirits, they channel through you as well. When you have an attachment, it affects you psychologically, affects you physically, mentally, um, you know, ways, energetic ways. I can always tell if somebody has an attachment based on what's in their aura. If I feel like there's a certain weight to their energy, it doesn't feel like them. There's many different symptoms to attachments. And it's actually, it's been such a strong subject and happening more and more frequently that I'm actually, that's the subject of my third book, is actually just specifying and teaching about attachments. And not only teaching about them, but how to clear yourself from them. Because I have so many people coming to me asking me to clear them. Like, people really need to know how to do it themselves. You already have a third book in the works. I like it. I like it. So, uh, Tom McNicholas, uh, $10 Super Chat. Thank you very much, Tom. So, Super Chat Superstar Tom McNicholas. And he did have a question a little bit uh up here so he was wondering do you see them or hear them both i hear, see them hear them and feel them okay and rebecca gardner is wondering how can you help a person with an attachment well there's actually many stages of attachment removal one in which you really should be trained for because if you're not trained in how to atta remove attachment you could become subject to that attack as well or you can absorb the energy just as much if you don't understand shielding raising your invention your um, intention your vibration bringing in spiritual help understanding how to clear an attachment out of somebody i can tell people how they can tell if somebody has an attachment such as psychological changes physical changes they have scratches over their body they have rashes that they can't explain they're sick all the time they're angry they hear voices they're having nightmares all of these things that would be considered abnormal for that particular person that onsets at a very quick rate of time would definitely be something that i would consider an attachment i do an attachment investigation where i ask them tons of questions and then i get their permission to move into their energy to find out what's really going on Fantastic. And we have a $20 super chat from Jen says supporting my favorite show. So thank you very much, Jen. Um, so Jen and Tom, awesome. And I had a question <laughs> that just kind of distracted me. So <laughs> um, what was it I wanted to ask? Chuck, you got something while I try to remember what the heck my question was? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's one of those things where, and, and I agree, uh, if you're not properly trained, you know, you can take on the karmic principles and I'm not sure, you know, your, your feelings or your belief systems within that. Now I, I, I do have a, a question because, you know, there are times that, uh, that I'll become overwhelmed and those, you know, for whatever reason, when I'm doing, uh, you know, my help as well with healing. Um, what do you do personally to protect yourself as you're working with these attachments or moving these wayward spirits on? Well, I learned for a long time ago that there are many different, things that you have to do first i ground myself i ground myself into earth energy because i'm the balance that Everyone's was it that was my question <laughs> ground ground and shield i hear the term all the time 
And I know our, our viewers do too. So what exactly is ground and shield? It sounds like you're about to get right into it. So just yes. details, please. Grounding is when you visualize your root chakra pushing down into the earth energy and forming a bond, a link between you and Mother Earth energy. It's actually lowering your vibration into the Earth's atmosphere. Um, not atmosphere, but the Earth's energy. And when you do that, you're allowing your physical body to be protected through the Mother Earth energy. Shielding is a way for you to project out and visualize an energetic barrier between you and the earthbound spirit or any sort of entity that allows you to feel protected. It raises your vibration and it also helps shield your aura from any weaknesses that you may have. I always tell people do a triple shield, start with the core, work your way out, allow there's a shield on the inside, push it outward, feel as if there's like, um, a bubble of energy around you and then form a crust barrier around that as well with your protection color. And that's a triple shield and I find that it works really, really well. And then lastly, you need to bring in your protection guide, your, your animal totems, your clears, your protectors, your healers. It's your spiritual team on the other side that's gonna stand behind you and, and cover you whenever you're doing this type of work. You can't do it by yourself. You have to have your team with you. All right. Well, thank you very much for the explanation. We have a $10 super chat from Tammy Heitzman. So we definitely have some super chat superstars tonight. Thank you very much, all of you. Really do appreciate it. Um, Donna Gorton is chat shenanigating right now because Shauna is indisposed at the moment, although she will be around for Inside the Upside Down. Hopefully she'll join here in a little bit. Um, so this is from Ether Shadows. Why does Amy think more people have attachments in recent years? Ooh, that's a long answer, actually. Um, I'll try to break it down a little bit. There's two answers to that. Okay. First answer is, why are there so many earthbound spirits than ever before? Because the earthbound spirits are the ones that mainly attach to people. Uh, I know. So, sorry. Sorry, right. take your time. We have, we have time. Go ahead. Talking. Um, there are a lot of entities that attach as well. We have a lot more entities around us that we can see. Our consciousness as a whole, as souls are rising. So our vibration raises up to their level so they can see us, we can see them more than ever before. And now that we're in the same vibrational frequency, they're like, okay, well that's a body, that's a person, I'm not alone anymore, I'm now going to attach to somebody and have a friend. So they're now seeing us more than ever before because of our shift. And I know the new agers always say we're in a consciousness shift up to a higher vibration. And it's really true. We really are. Another reason why there are so many earthbound spirits is I explain it this way in puberty. <clears throat> Souls as a whole go through many stages. We used to be young souls. What do young souls do? They do what they're told. When you die, you're told, go into the light. That's what you're supposed to do. Just like a child, you do what you're told. So when you die, you move on. You go straight into the light because you know that's the right thing to do. As we progress and our souls continue to evolve, we become more like teenagers, adolescents, young adults. What do teenagers do? They rebel. Right. <laughs> Just on my own. I know what I'm doing now. I don't have to listen to I you. I have all the answers, right? <laughs> And because of that, and that's where our humanity is right now, we are at a teenager, young adult stage. And because of that stage, we're now saying, oh, well, I'm dead. I'm going to roam for a little bit. I don't want to go into light. I want to check this out for a little bit. I want to see what it feels like to be a spirit in the earth plane. I want to experience this now to understand what it feels like. As we evolve even more, we become adults, wiser, stronger, um, more intelligent, we're going to go, okay, it's really stupid to be earthbound. When we were told to go straight into the light at the beginning, that was the right thing to do. So hundreds of years from now, when we evolve even more, when we die, we're going to go straight into the light because we understand that's the logical and the wise thing to do. But right now, humanity's still at that teenager stage, so we're doing a lot of crazy things right now. <laughs> we crazy humans. <laughs> we are, as souls so, souls evolve and develop and grow just like everything else true enough true enough um chuck i'll like i'll let you 
take a question here in a second, but uh, there is a question that was out there in the chat, and I should have, uh, I didn't do any housekeeping to start this show. We just jumped right into it. So uh, Jen was asking if Zippy was here. Uh, Zippy's going to be here later tonight. His son has a birthday today, so happy birthday to Zippy's son. So, happy birthday. Happy birthday. So, Chuck, you want to jump in? I, I've kind of been uh, throwing some questions out there. Oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, you know, it's, it's really what it's all about. Now, um, I, I, wa I want to talk about this book a little bit, you know, that's, uh, that, that's coming out here in May. Um, you know, for, for, for us folks that are always, and, and, and we truly never stop learning, we, we never stop developing. You know, I, I, I firmly believe that. But what, what is this book going to be, uh, you know, be for, for like, you know, how, how's it going to help uh, like, like myself? Uh, basically listening and walking the walk instead of, you know, you, you know what I'm saying uh, when, when it comes to that. And the book's called Light the Way, and I'm excited about that. Not only am I excited about that, Amy, but I'm excited to, to, to get your, your first book because I've not read it yet, but Mike has talked about that immensely. That that it's kind of a it's kind of a guide, you know, to help us wayward souls out there that are that are in the good spiritual fight. Yeah, I, right. I call this something. What I say was a field guide to light work. I think was yeah, pretty much how I summed it up. Yes, which exactly. it really is. It is. It's more of a general overview for the general public to understand what earthbound spirits are like and and what it's like to be a, a medium to help these earthbound spirits. So it, Toward the Light goes into more generalization, whereas Light the Way goes into more detail. So it kind of takes a lot of the aspects from the first book and goes into a deeper meanings behind them. The first third of the book is development. How do you develop as a medium? What are the clear abilities? How do you meditate? How do you connect to your guides? Who's on your spiritual team? It's all about the formation of your mediumship gifts. From there, it teaches about rescue work and how are there the different styles of rescue. There's direct, there's indirect. What do you do with each of these? How do you help these earthbound spirits cross? How do you communicate with them? Do you just point them in the right direction or is there a certain structure to this? Being ex-military, I'm all about structure. I line it all up and I explain every step that you need to do. From there, I go into the clearing. What are the attachments? Are there any demons? Are there any negative entities? Are there just earthbound spirits wandering? I go into the clearing work. I go through step-by-step -step guidelines of doing the what I call the walkthrough of a property. How can I tell if it's an energy cluster? How can I tell if it's a vortex? How can I tell if it's someone's projection and not an entity? So I go into details of the different types of forms of energies that you're going to be dealing with and how to actually interact with each form of energy. And then it kind of goes into the conclusion of just, you know, if you ever need any extra assistance to contact me. because I've been doing this work for almost 20 years and I didn't really have anyone guiding me, walking me through these steps. Everything had to be trial and error, working with my spiritual team. And I had like two teacher mediums that kind of did their own thing and I kind of incorporated it into a different structured style that would be easy to understand and explain to other people now mike she she really dives in now you know i i think she's opened up a can of worms which is <laughs> oh, awesome yeah. I, I i like this but now now my brain's working and you know and and i i'm not gonna lie to you it, it's uh it's one of those things uh the, the last couple of days spirit has just been going crazy and sometimes it clouds my vision especially the last two days but uh uh, you know, I, I, I guess I guess where, where I'm at there is uh, we, we all see energy, uh, you know, perhaps a little bit differently, uh, you know, in, in how we interact and do that sort of stuff. Now, how can you tell personally whether or not it's uh, it, it's a demon or it's a dark spirit or whether it's a, you know what I mean, just a just a wayward butthole spirit or, or a good spirit? Well, it really all depends on how they interact with me. It also tells on their vibrational frequency. As we all know, well, some of us know, us weird ones, um, <laughs> everybody has a different vibration according to their level of frequency. And the frequency determines whether it's a dense, heavy vibration or a very high light vibration. So when you move into the energy of an, um, um, like a cluster of energy, a projection, an entity, a spirit, you can read their vibration, find out what their intent is, 
what they're aware of, what they want, what they want to know, how they're going to interact with you. And then you can also tell on their vibrational frequency. It's kind of like just going into their karmic ties. Are they a soul? Are they a spirit guide? Are they a spirit on the other side? Are they an entity? Are they um, a demon? Is it just a projection? All of this takes time and experience to kind of say, well, it's hard to explain how you do it rather than you just go into the energy and see what into what comes out through that energy transfer and then figure it out from there. Plus, I have my guides on the other side whispering in my ear telling me, oh, by the way, don't mess with that because that's a lower level spirit and they're only looking to attack your energy. So you have to go off of psychic energy, your own intuition and mediumship energy going through the psychic senses of hearing, sensing, feeling and knowing when you can make an energy connection. That's fantastic. Now, Mike, I know there's 300 and 52 questions yeah, coming through the chat. A, we got a bunch of questions in the chat. Um, this one's kind of interesting from Rebecca Gardner. So, any suggestions for someone with narcolepsy to be able to meditate? I've been trying for 10 plus years with no success. I would definitely suggest a guided meditation. You need someone to walk you through it. Most people think that a meditation is when you just sit in the quiet and you allow yourself to relax. Well, if you're not trained to meditate, you're going to fall asleep. You're going to be like, to me all the time. Yeah. <laughs> completely boring. I'm not doing this. You need to have a voice. You need to have a guide. You need to just get on YouTube, go to those free guided meditations. They walk you through a setting. They tell you what to do. They tell you what to see. They tell you this is what you should be experiencing in your guided meditation. From there, you're going to quiet the mind. You're going to quiet your body. You're going to go into a rhythm, and you're going to learn how to meditate from there. Over time, you're not going to need that guide anymore. You're just going to go into that meditative state and go off somewhere else, go on a journey, talk with your guide, talk with family. A meditation, when you're looking for something or looking for guidance, should never be a quiet experience. It should be very active. Okay. Well, I hope that helps, Rebecca. Um, maybe I'll even check that out because, yeah, that's what happens to me anytime I try to meditate. Because I've, I've tried even to... Um, I, I was almost successful when I was a kid, even though I didn't know what the heck I was doing to astral project. But anytime I try these days, I just crash out. But, you know, when I only get like four hours of sleep per night, it's like no wonder. <laughs> I spent half my childhood in astral projection. So I remember you saying that before. Yeah, that's really interesting. And I see, she, just, now. she just opened up three more cans of uh, worms there, Mike. I, you know, I apologize for jumping in. I, Go ahead. I, I know you have a ton of questions, but. I, uh, I I astral project as well, and uh, I I tend to get in the same format. My my issue is is I love hearing the Australians and the English speak. So so I'll do uh, you know my meditation you know my guided meditation uh, with a couple of those uh, uh, you know that type of genre, and I do fall asleep. Uh, but but as far as astral projecting, uh, how how often or how hard was it for you to stay awake during your astral projection? Uh, you know when when you would go out with that well i wouldn't fall asleep at all it's almost like a daydream and you didn't realize you were actually projecting you just thought it was a very very vivid vivid um you know visualization you're you're daydreaming about something next thing you know you feel you're the sun on your face you feel the sand under your feet you're somewhere else and someone's standing over you talking to you and you're not responding to them and I remember I didn't know I would be astral projecting until I could actually feel myself coming back in my body. And then all of a sudden I'd be awake and what I was doing. So I really wasn't asleep. Rather, I was just somewhere else. I could open my eyes. I could look around. But when you really astral project out of your body, when someone talks to you, you can open your eyes. You know what's going on because your mind becomes conscious, aware of what's going on around you. But you can't move. You can't move your hands. You can't move your feet. You can't talk. It's almost like a paralysis until you actually feel your soul come back into your body, ground yourself, and then you can start chatting again. It takes me a couple of minutes. And people, of course, I keep thinking they're going to do something crazy to me while I'm gone. But, uh, yeah, sometimes you don't know you're doing it until you do it. Yeah. Interesting. I know we talked a lot about astral project projection the last time you were on, but it, to me, it's just it's an absolutely fascinating topic. Um, 
I've you know, I've read a couple of different books on it now, uh, probably several. And like I said, I, I came like this close when I was a kid, not knowing what I was doing. And then later on as an adult, I was like, oh, that's what happened at that time. <laughs> so it's something that's fascinated me, but I've been unable to do it as an adult. A um, couple of other questions that we have. Uh, I know we already talked about uh, protection a little bit, but you know, some people kind of join a little bit late, so maybe you can kind of recap. Uh, Vegas Ghost Girls Paranormal Investigators is, is asking, how do you protect? So maybe just a <clears throat> quick recap. Um, as there's many different forms of protection, and I say that honestly, the best one is shielding and raising your vibration. Another one is confidence, understanding spiritual law. This spirit can't do anything to you that you don't allow. So you need to be firm. You need to tell them, look, I'm here to help you. I'm here to talk with you. I'm not your victim. So you need to have confidence in when you're dealing with them. Next thing you need to shield. Send that energy out. Spread it out from your body. Start at the core. And that's, that's the inner self of your heart chakra. Spread that energy out. Push it out through your body. And this is all through visualization and intent. Whatever color you want to use, a lot of people use white. I don't always use white. Sometimes I use gold. Sometimes I use pink. Sometimes I use indigo blue. Whatever I feel is the right intent for that time, I push it out through my body, and I allow myself to be surrounded in this shield like a cocoon of energy. And then I form a, a barrier or crust around that as well. You also want to bring in your guides, bring in your angels, bring in your animal totems, bring in your protection, because they're going to be your allies on the other side. You're dealing with spirit energy, so you need to bring spirit energy in to be to protect you, essentially, and then have the personal responsibility yourself. Okay. And then from M. Labuda, are attachments always bad? No, not at all. Oh my gosh, I can't tell you how many babies I've had to take out of people. The babies are not oh. bad. No, oh. um, I've had a lot of children. I've had animals. I've had just those real old, stubborn old men that just like, hey, I'm here. I'm not harming anybody. Just leave me alone. I'm comfortable. And you're like, dude, you can't stay. You got to move on. And they don't like that. So I have all sorts of attachment um, spirits that I work with. I would say... For negative, I would say maybe a third of the attachments that I work with. Quite often, most of them are not negative, only because people are absorbing energy like crazy. Now, the attachments people keep thinking are negative quite often aren't always spirits. They are what we call projections, energy clusters, and entities. They are much heavier and can be much more negative than, a, than an earthbound spirit. Uh, what are these things? Energy clusters. Energy that clusters together. Think of sand and water. Your energy is the sand. The emotion is the water. So when you have a lot of negative situations that happen to you, it builds and builds upon itself. And with that energy cluster, you embed them inside your body in what we call chakras. These chakra systems are energy sources within your body that hold your emotions, your feelings, your, your physical senses, your connection to your physical body. And what happens is when you don't release this negative energy, it gets embedded inside your chakras. After a while, it builds and builds and builds, and you could feel like you have an attachment like attacking you, but it's really your own energy that just needs to be released. Over time, this energy builds, and what we call projects, it's a projection. Just like you have symptoms when you're sick, you get a cold, you get a cough, you get a fever, you get a really bad stomach ache. These are projections of energy. And instead of physically manifesting, they can manifest in forms of nightmares, panic attacks, anger, stress, sad sexual addictions. All the things come out in these projections to alert you that there's something wrong with your energy. So a lot of people feel that these energies these spirits are attacking you really it really it's your own energy that's manifesting in such a way that seems very negative and then what we have the entities whether they're demonic or they're just entities from other realms they're here they're watching they're studying us they're not all here to be bad they're just here using us as hosts to learn off of us they want to understand our species in order to do that they have to go and walk in our shoes and understand our daily lives how we interact with each other so they may feel negative they may seem very low vibrational 
but they're not here to harm us, even though we feel sick on occasion when we have them. So there are many different forms of negative spirit, negative attachments that aren't just spirits. I hope I made that kind of clear. It's a, a lot of information. <laughs> it's it's a lot, but you know what? Uh, everybody is is loving you in the chat. So uh, like Ether Shadow is saying, Amy is so interesting. I turn her ear for hours. Rebecca Gardner is agreeing with her. Um, and, and spooky spectacular is complimenting you as well. So you're getting a lot of compliments in the chat. So and all this information is in the book too, but it goes into much more detail too. Yeah. So yeah. Amy's book. Uh, this is the new one, Light the Way. And I, you know, I didn't bring up a graphic for Toward the Light, which is your first one, which is kind of like your your overview of everything. And this one is more on uh, rescue mediumship. Yeah, Toward the Light is actually sold out on Amazon right now, is but it? within a week or two, it should be back in stock. Okay. It was so after three years, huh? So sold out. <laughs> Go figure. Well, here's here's something that's interesting. Uh, you know, on the speaker side of things, uh, Jen said that she just bought your last available copy of your first book on Amazon, what? and she <laughs> said she really liked you. So, and 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 I'm kind of bummed now that uh, that, that I can't go out and buy one for myself. Thank you. Here's your list. So, <laughs> I have my copy. <laughs> so. Oh, there'll definitely be more out there. Don't worry. My publisher loves selling. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Jen K is trying to, I guess, clarify here a little bit. Um, so your own energy can pretty much make you feel like you have a negative energy in you? Yes, very much so. Depending on how much stress you've been under, or when you connect to people, it may not just be you, but if you connect to people around you that are suffering um, through many different negative emotions, we absorb energy like sponges. So if you're intuitive in any way, you're creating an energy link between you and that person. Therefore, you're connecting and you're transferring energy. So you could be sucking in that person's negative energy without even realizing you're doing that. So quite often when the energy builds, just like anything else, it becomes like mud. It becomes heavy comes solid and it just starts projecting and manifesting in ways you can imagine now have you ever been, been in a situation where you know you've uh, you you've accidentally or something's you know gotten through where, where you've had to have clearings yourself i wouldn't be sitting here right now if i hadn't had the experience and i could tell you i've probably had over a hundred so um i've had to learn my training analogy is imagine yourself as a baby and your parents drop you in the deep end and say, learn how to swim. That's what my training felt like as a medium. I opened up the mediumship and was immediately surrounded by all types of energy, negative and positive. And I had to learn how to fend for myself and fight them off, even though I wasn't alone. My guides were always there with me, but I had to learn how to clear myself before I understood how to clear other people. So I've had tons of experiences. I'm surprised I don't have that nervous tick. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. That's me. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just to uh, let the Periscope people know, I just, I know, a little bit late, <laughs> a little slow on the uptake. I just logged into Periscope. <laughs> so if anybody has a question down there, it looks like Tom McNicholas is down in there as well. He usually doubles up and goes into both places. So, uh, okay. Kathy Asiliento asks, how would you go about getting your energies back in line? Such as clearing. Um, I would definitely work on a clearing, understanding how to clear away negative imprints from your chakras is a big one. Um, it's what we call an energy cleanse. I would def it's hard to do that unless you're explained how to do it. And again, if anybody's looking for any help, just connect to me after the show. But you want to always start with an energy cleanse. When you're clearing yourself of energy, it comes out of your feet. You want to ask your guides and your angels or your clearing specialist to kind of take this energy from you. I never advocate pushing your energy down into earth because people used to always tell me, well, Earth is going to transmute your negative energy. That's not always the case. I had a very nasty elemental attachment for several months, training and teaching me that they didn't want our energetic garbage anymore. And I was like, we needed to send that energy out to the universe and allow our spiritualist team on the other side determine where it was going to go for better use because we shouldn't be making that determination of energy. Energy cannot be... 
um, cease to exist. It can only be transmuted, changed, and pushed off somewhere else. So if you don't want the energy that you've created, ask your guides to take it away from you. Next thing, I would ground yourself, your root chakra, into earth energy. Allow the energy from the earth to come in and sort of balance out your physical vibration. And then I would connect in with your guides, your spiritual team, and ask them to do an energetic reboot of your vibration as well. You can use a lot of tools around you, crystals, smudging, candles, crystal bowls, um, any kind of music, anything that helps to raise your vibration. So there's many, many different ways. So let me, I guess let me try to clarify for myself. Let me see if I was following along <laughs> uh, correctly. I so... Um, so you'll take positive energy from the earth, but you won't send anything back down there. You'll send it off somewhere else. Well, you don't want to send negative energy down to the earth. The earth needs healing. If you're going to send anything down to the earth, send healing energy down to the earth. Send love. Send something of a vibration that it can use. But why send spirit energy? If you have an earthbound attachment, you don't want to shove it down into the earth's energy. If you have energy clusters, that's your energy. That's what you've manifested. If you transmute it into the earth, it's kind of saying, well, we're not going to need this. This is not the betterment of the earth's vibration. So it's kind of like sending it trash. So we don't want to trash up the earth. We want to give it to our guides, give it to our angels, allow them to transmute it, change it. They have the capability of doing that the earth can't. So we allow them to take that from us. If it's really dense, really thick, allow them to use that for like volcano activities or to help create a hurricane or to help start a fire to allow new growth and, and, and beginnings of a forest. We shouldn't be making the determination of where the energy should be going. We should allow the other side to make that, that determination, that decision. Okay. So you're not necessarily like uh, littering the air with, <laughs> with negative energy. You're allowing those other spirits to do something with it instead. Right. You kind of create like a vortex. In that vortex of energy, your energy is being shifted and sent off to your guides and your angels and your clearing specialists on the other side. If you don't know who they are, that's fine. All you have to do is have the intent saying, I, this is what I want. I want to release this. And it's not like you're just blowing it off into the air. You're actually sending it in a vortex to your guides for them to use. Okay. And, you know, just, just to kind of jump in, you know, how, how I do it, uh, you know, and every, Everybody does it a little bit differently, obviously, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll I'll bring it in through the crown chakra and blast in the yellow, golden, white light energy, and I'll bring up uh, Mother, you know, Mother Earth, Mother Gaia's uh, stuff, and then I open that heart chakra, up, and then uh, I uh, I send the intent out into nothing but this brilliant, uh, uh, you know, yellow, golden, white light where it uh, where it goes into that vortex. So yeah, I, I I'm I'm really. Uh, really interested you know to, to how you do that do you send everything up through the the crown chakra because it's different it seems uh with, with all of us i push everything down i start with my crown with golden energy and i kind of push this golden energy throughout my entire body including my chakras it's kind of like flushing out this system of all negative imprints once you flush everything out through your body it comes out through your feet and then allow that to go into a vortex to your guides. If you want to do it the opposite way, you could start at your feet and do a vortex out through your crown chakra. I just, I've always believed whatever I'm cleaning myself off in the shower, it comes down. It True. flushes from my crown down to my feet. So a lot of people like to clear themselves in the shower. So it's a great visualization to do it that way too. Interesting. Ether Shadow says, I'm never going to send the negative down ever again. I've been learned. <laughs> I can't tell you how much they had to train me on that because I've been doing it for years. Mm -hmm. And then I had this really, really nasty uh, attachment. I thought, honestly, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I have a demon for the first time ever. This is scary because it was intense. It would crawl through my face. Oh, wow. It would poke me. It would blind me. It would um, push on my chest. It would really pull apart my solar plexus chakra it attacked me and then i kept asking it why are you attacking me they're like we're not we're here to train you and teach you something we're here with the light and we're not here to harm you I'm like well it seems like you are and no matter what i could do i could not get rid of them and so i'd asked a few people and they're like this sounds like an elemental 
So I had to meditate on it for a while and find out, well, why is an elemental attacking me per se? And after a while, I finally talked to them because I'm stubborn. When I have an attachment, I don't want to talk to them. I just want to clear it. I just want to get it away. I am like, I'm not nice when it comes to attachments. Um, But this one, I finally had to break down and talk to because they kept telling me, we're not here to harm you. We're here to teach you. So when they told me about how I was pushing my energy down to the earth, like, don't do this again, or we will come and we will make it known to you that this is not what we want. But I think they also really wanted to get the point across to me because I train people all the time on clearing. So they wanted to make it very specific that when I trained people, I did not train them the wrong way. Really important. Um, Now, uh, I I hate to jump in, but uh, I do have a question uh, over in the speaker chat from Jen B. She said, uh, she, she, uh, let's see, she says it like this. She doesn't feel the earth is able to recycle the energy into neutral energy. And that, that was her question. Was that a statement or a question? I think uh, it's it's got a question mark. Uh, she she's just curious uh, whether or not you think the Earth is uh, able to recycle that energy, maybe into neutral energy. I think for the most part it can, but you have to understand that we're doing so much damage to the planet as it is that it's having to restore its own energy. It's trying to heal itself. It's trying to save itself from all the pollution and all the damage that we're doing to the earth right now, it doesn't need all that excess energy that we're sending down to them. Before it would have, but now with our consciousness and our our shift of vibration, the earth is like, look, try to send it somewhere else. For those who do it and the elementals are fine with it, go for it, but I wouldn't make it a common practice. I wouldn't do it all the time. We should be healing the earth rather than hurting it. Um, <laughs> kind of. We are down the <laughs> No, it's been it's been a lot. <laughs> it's been a lot of information. And I remember uh, Amy last time we had you on. It was it was a lot of information, a lot of good information. And you guys have had some great questions out there too. So, really do appreciate it. Just had to take a breath for a second. <laughs> I know I I teach so much. That's why I just uh, created the larger center. I'm going from 600 square feet to 2,000 square feet. That's so right. I'm creating a large classroom, events, readers, healers, center, so people can kind of come and learn from there. But they're not just going to learn there. We're going to have teachers from all over the world doing video where they can learn from teachers and they don't have to travel. And then I'm also going to have it where I'm going to start teaching and training online as well so i've had so many people ask me to create my own youtube channel and i've been mm-hmm. thinking about it for a while i'm you like do it i'm so camera shy it's like really i don't know you're on camera right now i know only by <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> it's a video uh, show but but I mean, it, it, i've been definitely thinking about that as well because it's just it's all about taking the information that we've learned and passing that on that's what it's really all about. Just not hoarding it for ourselves. I can help so many people in so many ways, um, not just earthbound spirits, but people who want to train and learn how to protect themselves. It's really important. Yeah. So you mentioned your center, uh, which is opening near you. So, and that's in New Hampshire. So talk a little bit more about that, what people can expect, uh, where to find it, when it's going to open all of that. Yep. Uh, the center is called Infinite Journey. And we have the symbol of the tree of life which has always been my symbol for many years. It's actually in Hampstead, New Hampshire, off of Route 111, so it's right on the main road. It's a barn, as I pe- tell people, but we're in New Hampshire, so that's uh, that's a great thing, <laughs> being in a barn. Um, but it's it's got this huge grass field in the front, so we're going to have a lot of bonfires, a lot of different goat like, I like having campfire ghost stories, so I have that yeah. a lot. Uh, We're going to have a lot of activities in in the uh, event center because we have a room for events. We have a classroom. We have a healing room. We have my office, and we have separate reading rooms. And we're also going to have retail. So we have Sticks and Stones retail center that's going to have product from all over the world that you can't find anywhere else. It's just going to be absolutely amazing. So it's a really, really wonderful transition going from a small center 
to a large center and just allowing ourselves to support people around us who want to learn more because it's more than just saying, okay, I'm in the new age field. There's so many people that want to expand their understanding of just energy, the universe themselves. And I like to bring a more of a grounded, logical perspective on that so everybody can understand. I'm uh, ex-military, as you know, um, have many people in the police force around me. My best friend worked with the police for 40 years. So I'm very logical, very grounded in my perspective and the way that I teach people. So I try to make this information understanding so that everybody can learn this. I can explain it in a very non um, non-spiritual way, more grounded, so that anybody can pick up a book or watch a video and completely get what I'm saying and relate it to their own personal lives. That's absolutely fantastic. And I would highly suggest you know, the the online classes, do whatever you can on YouTube. There are people down on the chat that are saying, I would take her classes, but they're not anywhere near you. So I highly encourage it because you will have people come. If I build it, they will come. If you build it, they will come. <laughs> kind of like Iowa, you know. Like Iowa, <laughs> the cornfield. Ah. <laughs> Baseball right. field in the cornfield, yes. I love that movie, by the way. Um, from Discord threads, do you think artists are influenced by attachments sometimes? What type of artists? Is well, this art well, art? I, I would say, yeah, I don't know which type of artist, but I would say art art or even like a writer, you know, or would they... Could they possibly be influenced by attachments? I think anybody with artistic ability usually has a very strong right brain. And with the right brain comes intuition, psychic ability. So it might be enhanced a little bit more. With that, your vibration may be a little bit brighter, maybe a little bit stronger. So attachments may be attracted to your vibration more than somebody with a logical, more grounded vibration. So I would say definitely singers, actors, artists, anybody who uses a lot of creativity usually holds on the right brain, which is housed with the intuition. Okay. You so know, Mike, writers. funny, funny <laughs> thing happened today in class. I, I, I'm sitting there and I'm going and, and I'm sharing all this knowledge and whatever. And this kid that says, Mr. Banks, I didn't think you were that smart. How do you retain all that information? And I said, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it, it could be that you know, that uh, I'm channeling some of that information. I don't. You could be, definitely. I mean, and not to say that people with left brain don't experience that because they absolutely do. Um, I'm 50-50. I'm 50 left, 50 right. So I kind of see things on a very logical, engineered mind, as my husband say. I think like a guy all the time because it's, <laughs> it's the way I am, but then... I am very creative. I'm constantly creating and drawing. I absolutely love music. I wanted to be an actress or dancer when I was a kid. So I'm very right brain as well. So it, it just all depends on your vibration, what you came into here to do, what's your contract, what's your life purpose. So all that determines whether you're susceptible or not. Oh, she said contract. My contract. So I, so I, have to, I have to interject there now. Um, and, and do you believe that uh, there there are astral visitors or you know whatever or type of entities that were not human can alter your human contract while you're here? No, entities cannot alter your contract because your contract is a divine contract. You can alter your contract. You can connect to your guides through free will and say, guess what? I've changed my mind. I'm not going to do that anymore you're gonna feel a, a strong influence to continue with your contract, but it absolutely is your choice. We have something called the higher self on the other side. If your higher self, you know, throughout seeing your life the way it's going, then you know what, I'm gonna change this contract out a little bit. I'm gonna tweak it so that I feel I'm gonna get a better experience this way. All of a sudden something may shift for you and then you're gonna feel very different. Your personality may change. You may attract new people into your life. So contracts are not set in stone, but they are all going with your free will. Can and you explain what you mean by contract? Contract is um, the decision that you made, your life purpose, why you came in here. It is the foundation of who you meet, 
what you do, what your personality is like, what jobs do you have, uh, what you want to accomplish. So this is your, before you even came to Earth. Before your spirit, you, your soul. You go anywhere in the universe, um, including Earth. Um, this is what you have decided for yourself. This is a contract between you and yourself only. But you also make contracts with people that you encounter in your life, such as your spouse. You two formed a contract to say we're going to marry each other and support each other in this life together. The contract may state, well, we're only going to be together for 10 years, then we're going to separate because we've learned everything we want to learn from each other. So there are many contracts that you have with people as well. And then we have what we call soulmate contracts. So in these soulmate contracts, you when you connect to someone, you feel such a strong pull with their connection as a soulmate because they're in your soul group. You've made a contract with them to determine what each is going to learn and what connection you're going to have in that life too. So there are many different contracts. Okay, interesting. Um, from Rebecca Gardner, this is kind of backtracking a little bit, but um, are you going to have online classes available? I suppose I'm going to since that <laughs> subject has been coming up a lot lately. <laughs> I think People you're going to have to. Yes, absolutely. Like I said, I've been writing the books to train people. I've been thinking about starting with like webinars. That way, um, if people get onto my um, YouTube channel or my um, Facebook or even my website, I can have pay to play where people can ans ask questions and I can answer them and do um, one on one with people. I can do group webinars however they really want to do it. I'm just trying to figure out the right structure that's going to be right for everybody. So i got to throw this one out there. Mark Fiore says, my contract has my butt at work in two hours. <laughs> True. Go. Yeah. Your contract has decided to be at that job at this time. Uh, I, I do have a question via Spreaker. Jim B wants to know, uh, do you believe that we live in multiple, or that we live multiple simultaneous lives in other dimensions? I believe anything is possible with what I've seen, what I've experienced and what I know as a soul, I absolutely believe anything is possible. Um, when I connect to other entities that are in other realms, I must think, well, what's on in the other realm? What's there? And I think quantum physics and scientific um, theories have proven that there are other realities out there. Now, what intelligence is in that reality? I don't know. But you have to think the soul is fluid. The higher self may send out many projections or many shards of its own intelligence into many different alternate realities to experience many different situations in a very short amount of time. So I absolutely believe that could be possible. And when, when life is done, it transmits and sends all that information back to what we call the higher self, the spirit form. And from there, we'll send out another shard of energy as a soul into another parallel universe to learn more. So we're not just coming in as humans, sometimes we're coming in and going to other planets or going in going in as a water molecule or, or deciding to come in as a plant because there's many different aspects of life that we want to learn, not just in human form. So it, it all depends on what your soul is ready to do. Uh, thank you down there in uh, Periscope for the uh, for the invites. That's very cool. <laughs> Just need to throw that out there. Um, okay, so uh, since you're talking about different dimensions and all that, um, what do you think about some of these entities that we encounter and, and we're dealing with, that the possibility that they may be from other dimensions that here in ours we're experiencing somebody or something from another dimension that maybe there's some sort of bleed over like that well there's what we call cracks through dimensional um, walls and the, where they create vortexes of energy most of the entities that are here are from other dimensions other portals other um, areas of existence and like I said they're coming here to learn from us some are coming to attack but again we have a lot of protection on the other side what I call spirit police that help us on the other side sort of regulate the energies that are coming in to sort of mix and use us as hosts. Um, I don't know as far as us going into other realities what we're doing there, but I'm hearing from my guides that we do. What we do there is probably learning 
this as much as they're coming here and learning. We're just trying to learn about different species of energy. So those cracks, those holes of vibrational shifts into the parallel universes are letting an awful lot of energy in. Okay, interesting. Um, this is from, I'm trying to read one of, from one of the Sherry's. Thank you, Donna, for forwarding this long because I didn't see it. Uh, where does Amy get all of her information from? Well, uh, probably years and years and years of. <laughs> years and years and years. Um, I was also born talking to my guides. I've been talking to my guides and spirits since I was two. And I was also born with just a lot of weird knowledge that I just couldn't explain. I just knew things without understanding how I knew them. And when somebody would say something about heaven or the other side, I would immediately know if it was true or not based on how I felt. And then I would start training with my guides. Every time I meditate, I would go and I would talk with teachers on the other side. They would channel information to me when I would write. Um, when I would go and teach in front of a class, I would have energy just sort of flowing from me. So half the time I'm teaching through my own experiences and knowledge, the other half, I'm just channeling this information. There's been many times I've had to stop what I was saying and go, oh my gosh, that was really cool. I didn't know that before. And that's when I knew I was channeling because how did I do that? How did I just start talking about something I had no knowledge about? It's because you never know. We are filtering and bringing down knowledge at all times. And whether it feels right or not is what you should go with. Okay. Very cool. Um, actually, I think that exhausts all of our questions from the chat at the moment. <laughs> Believe it or not. You guys have had a lot of great questions out there, and I really do appreciate it. Great. Yeah, they uh, they they they've been extremely interactive tonight, Mike. It's uh, that's that's fantastic. Now, I do have to ask Amy this: Why is it that uh, the oh, well, and and we kind of discussed it a little bit uh, pre-show, but uh, for for all this chaos that's out there right now, uh, do do we blame uh, uh, the sun for all this? You know, this uh, whether it's jumbling up your your mind or or opening up your uh you know your light bulb so to say you know a little bit more um at this very moment in time i would say the planetary shift and the sun yes but what's really creating all the different shifts of vibration is really our evolution as a soul our consciousness is changing and with change comes you know um as they say, you know, injuries comes, uh, growing pains comes, all these different experiences that we don't know how to explain, but we just go through them. We sense, we feel, we understand, and then we share what we know. It's not saying we're all 100% right or we're wrong, but if it's what feels right to us, it's our truth, then share it and then learn from, ex you know, from each other. I don't believe that any of us have all the knowledge and all the proof. There's no way we can have that, and there's no way we can. We wouldn't be here on the planet if we knew everything. So all we can we're do supposed is to be just, learning something, right? We're sure. all Bobby learning. Right. Yeah. I'll be here doing my work for 40, 50 years and still learning. <laughs> um, Sharon Lane says, new subscriber and first live chat, excellent information. So welcome to the land of the Mad Hatters, Sharon. So uh, we're winding down toward the end of the show. only have a couple minutes left. Uh, so we will get to shout outs here in a minute, but Amy wanted to tell everybody again real quick where they can where, where they can find your book, when the new book is coming out, you know, any websites, the center, all of that great information real quick. Yes, um, they can find my books on Amazon.com and Barnes and Noble. First book is Toward the Light. The second book is Light the Way. As you can tell, I like the word light. I'm not sure if it'll be in my third book, but we'll wait and see. Um, <laughs> You can find me on my website, amymajor.com. You can also check me out on my new center. I have a new website for my center for Infinite Journey, and that's ijourneycenter.com. But you can also look me up on Facebook under Amy Major or Infinite Journey. You can find me, just Google my name, Rusty Medium, and I pages and pages come up. So feel free to uh, ask away, and I guess I'll be creating a new uh, training webinar. or they want it videos they so want it. <laughs> i'd be really interested in checking it out as well so 
There you go. It's, I'm going to blow some minds. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to it. All right. Let's get to the shout outs. Donna Gordon, thank you for uh, shenanigating the chat. John, Donna is one of our Cheshire cats, and Shauna wasn't able to make it, I guess, for the entire show. So thank you, Donna, for taking that up. Um, let's get to it. So Rebecca Gardner, thank you very much for joining us again. Katie Palmer, you as well. Uh, Jen K, thank you very much. Uh, Lady Death says she is also a, a new subscriber, so thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, Candy Orton, thank you for joining us. Um, Beyond the Light Network, that's Chuck himself sitting right there, <laughs> but he was also popped into the chat. Um, see, Ether Shadow, thank you very much. I think I already got Jin K. You guys had a lot of great questions tonight, by the way, all of you. Uh, Zippy Davis, thank you for uh, showing up again. Thank, uh, happy birthday to your son. Um, it sounds like you ate a little bit. So, <laughs> uh, Kathy Siliento, thank you for your question tonight, too. One of the Sherry's, thank you for yours. Uh, Tim Schoen, thanks for uh, joining us again this evening. He says he's also subscribed to uh, the podcast, so we do have a couple of podcasts. One is for uh, Edge of the Rabbit Hole. We've been uploading the archives of that from last year until we finally catch up to <laughs> the current ones. And then the uh, Mike Ricksecker audio journey, which has Inside the Upside Down and also some uh, a bunch of other stuff, too. Uh, so... Uh, Raul Pfeiffer Mueller, thank you. Uh, says, thanks for airing your program. Crew is salient, probing the phenom. <laughs> so he always has interesting comments. Um, who else do we have? Uh, Sharon Lane, thank you uh, again for joining us. Uh, Shay Carroll, who was um, bringing some of the speaker questions into here when uh, Chuck wasn't jumping on it. <laughs> Although Chuck did jump on a lot of the speaker stuff. Um, and thanks for, uh, for broadcasting us over uh, Spreaker, Chuck. Really do appreciate that. Absolutely. I, I do want to throw out the shout outs mm -hmm. on the speaker side of yeah, things. Go ahead. We got Jim, Jim B., uh, Kim Addy Purvis, uh, Shay Carroll, uh, and if I missed anybody else, uh, I do know that a lot of people, they, they, don't, they won't come into the chat or whatever. Right. They're, they're yeah, like, you get, you get those, but, those lurkers. I mean, the same thing happens here. I, I give the shout outs for whoever's in the chat uh, as best as I can tell because I'll miss some. I mean, there's a lot of people in the chat. Uh, oh, I do need to throw out our. Uh, Shout outs for our super chat superstar. So uh, early on in the show, we had a, uh, a plethora of a super chat. So appreciate that. So Tom McNicholas, uh, Jen and Tammy Heitzman, thank you guys very much for being super chat superstars this evening. It's always appreciated. And so, um, who else do we have? Let me see. Uh, Spooky Spectacular, Dawn, appreciate it as always. Um, the Vegas Ghost Girls, you had some questions tonight. Appreciate that as well. Uh, Mark Fiore, thanks for joining us again. Bethany Warner, you too. Uh, there's Tom McNicholas again. And Discord Threads, uh, thank you as well. Imlabuda61, as always. Robert White, thanks for joining us from Australia. And um, Sherry Willeman just joined down in Periscope. So thanks for joining us again, Sherry. And um, I know uh, Amber is usually down there at Periscope and shares out our feed, so uh, we do appreciate that. Clair uh, Clairvoyant DJ, thanks for joining us again. Diane Hilbert, of course, X Group Home Kid. And yeah, we get a lot of people in the chat, so let me scroll back down and see if I've missed anybody. Um, so, I think, okay, we got Jen, Jen K, Diane Hilbert, Tammy Heitzman's. Spooky, Lady Death, Kathy. So I think we got everybody. <laughs> that is at least here now. So, you all right. So be able to get to all of them one day. What's that? You're going to grow so much. The list is just going to get longer and longer. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's bigger than last year, isn't it, Amy? Yeah, it is definitely. <laughs> so uh, yes, and uh, positive energy to uh, Bethany Warner to get will to get well again. So, all right. So yes, I saw the question in there. Is there a show afterwards? Yes, there is. Um, I didn't get out as many invites as I wanted to out on uh, on the Facebook event. And Shauna's had this weird, crazy issue going on lately with her Facebook where any page that she's an admin on, it doesn't come up. So yeah. since she's an admin on all of our pages, she can't get into any of the uh, events to send out invites and all that. And she's usually the, the big one that takes care of the invites. So um, I didn't get out as many, but yes, there is a Inside the Upside Down tonight. It'll be interesting. So we had the Friday Night Ghost Frights on Friday of all the uh, ghosts and spirit photography. 
ran through like a little bit of a history lesson, mm -hmm. you know, some of the classics, some of the hoaxes from back then too. And then we got into some of ours that we've taken over the years. So we're going to, and that was just a quick 10 minute video. We're going to expand on that and examine a lot more of these uh, photographs. So um, including some that uh, Shauna has taken that I wasn't there for. So like back in the day before we actually met, she's messaging me now. So, um, so she will be joining us here shortly. So stay tuned. Uh, just after the show, I'm going to switch everything out, bring it back up. You might have to uh, refresh your feed, and we will be going with Inside the Upside Down. Amy, again, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, always a pleasure. You always have so much great information. Really do appreciate it. And, th and Chuck, thanks for filling in tonight for Vanessa. It's always nice. I'm a Mad Hatter, so I'm <laughs> giving this Mad Hatter stuff to everybody else, right? Yeah, you are, yes. Mad Hatters. We love you all. So, everybody, have a good one. We'll see you in a few. Good night. <laughs>